tayo Myla Joy C. Cantaha, first year nursing student at Central Mindanao University. And today, I am going to demonstrate the procedure transferring between bed and wheelchair, chair or commode. And now, we're going to do the assessment, which is to assess the situation to determine the need to get the patient out of bed. And to review medical record and nursing care plan for um, conditions that may influence the patient's ability to move. For the possible nursing diagnosis, we have activity intolerance and risk for pain. For the materials, we're going to be needing a chair or the wheelchair and a gate belt. Since we're all set, let us now start with the procedure. For procedure number one, prior to performing the procedure, introduce yourself and verify your client's identity using agency protocol. Good morning, ma'am. I am Myla Jisi Gantoka. I am your nurse for today. Pwede nang mabal yung pangalan, ma'am? Hannah Sosedo. Ay, mukhang birthday, ma'am. Pano sa October 18, 2001. Okay, good. And now, we're going to explain the um, uh, transfer process to the client during the transfer. Um, explain step by step what the client should do. For example, move your right foot forward and everything. And this establishes report and the patient comfort and also reduces anxiety and stress for the patient. So now I'm going to um, transfer you to a chair. So I need you to cooperate later on as I will um, told you what to do or anything. Okay, ma'am? Is it okay with you? Okay, now we're going to proceed to procedure number two, which is to perform hand hygiene and observe other appropriate infection prevention procedures. This is to prevent the spread of microorganisms. So now I'm going to apply alcohol-based hand rub, assuming that I've already washed my hands. This is, as what I've said, prevent the spread of microorganisms. For procedure number three is to provide for the client privacy. So since I've already closed all the curtains and the door, um, this is to provide um, safety and security and comfort for the patient. So now we're going to proceed to procedure number four. Position the equipment appropriately, lower the bed to its lowest position, then the client's feet will rest flat on the floor. Lock the wheels of the bed. So now we've already, the bed is already on its lowest position and it is already in lock. This is to ensure that the patient's comfort and safety is prioritized. Now we're going to proceed to procedure number five. Place the wheelchair parallel to the bed and as closer to the bed as possible. So now, Going to the other side. We're going to put this as close as possible. And now we are going to um, put the wheelchair on the side of the bed that allows the client to move toward his or her stronger side. Lock the wheels of the wheelchair and raise the foot plate. This is to ensure that the body of the client is in proper alignment. By raising the foot plate, it will easily reach and place the client's foot. So now it is already locked and you've already raised the foot plate. So now we're going to proceed to procedure number six. Prepare and assess the client. So we've already prepared and assessed the client a while ago. Um, assess the client to a sitting position on the side of the bed. Following assisting client to sit on the side of the bed then in assisting client to sit. This is to ensure the client's comfort while in sitting position. But before that, I'm going to get the gate belt. We're gonna be needing this later on. And now we're going to assist the patient to a sitting position. Ma'am, I'm, um, I'm going to get first the blanket so that it won't hinder doing the activity. Okay, ma'am. Okay, put your feet here. And I need you to stand. And sit and put your feet on the ground. Okay? Are you comfortable, ma'am? Okay, now we're going to proceed to procedure number seven. Assess the client for orthostatic hypotension before moving the client from the bed. This is to avoid the patient from falling and reduces the risk of further injuries. So we've already assessed the patient and now we are going to proceed to procedure number eight, which is to assist the client in putting on a bathrobe and non skin slippers or shoes. So we're going to get the bathrobe. Now we're going to put this on the patient. So I need you to put your hands here, ma'am. And here. And the shoes. We're going to put it on the patient. And now we're going to proceed to procedure number nine. You need to 
place the gate transfer belt um, snugly around the client's waist, check to be certain that the belt is securely fastened. This is to ensure client safety and comfort. So here's the belt. I'm gonna put it on the patient. I'm gonna put it to you, ma'am. And check if it is purely put. Um, now, I'm going to proceed to procedure number 10. Give explicit instructions to the client. Ask the client to move forward and sit on the edge of the bed or the surface on which the client is sitting with feet placed flat on the floor so that the client can perform the procedure um, properly. So, ma'am, I would like to ask you to move forward. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, that's it. Now, we're going to proceed to procedure number 11. Lean forward slightly from the hips to support the hips. And now, I'm going to lean. So now, we're going to proceed to procedure number 12. The foot of the stronger leg beneath the edge of the bed or a sitting surface and put on the other foot forward. So now, I'm going to do this. And now, we're, this provides mobility. And now, we're going to proceed to procedure number 13. Place the client's hands on the bed surface or available stable area so that the client can push while standing. This uses the patient's arm for support and stability. Now, I would like you to put your um, hands here so that when you stand up, um, you can hold here for strength. Okay, now, ma'am? Okay, now we're going to proceed to procedure number 14. Position yourself directly. Stand directly in front of the client and to the side requiring the most support. Hold the gate um, transfer belt with the nearest hand and the other hand supports the back from the client's shoulder. So, you need to do this. Lean your trunk forward from the hips, flex your hips, knees, and ankles, assume a broad stance, placing one foot forward and one back. So this. Brace the client's feet with your feet to prevent the client from sliding forward or laterally. So I'm going to brace the client's feet. And now, mirror the placement of the client's feet if possible. So assessing balance and strength helps to identify the need for the addition of assistance when there are risks of falling. For procedure number 15, you need to assist the client to stand and then move together toward the wheelchair or sitting area to which you wish to transfer the client. On the count of three, ask the client to push down against the mattress or the side of the bed while you transfer your weight from one foot to the other. So while keeping your back straight and stand upright moving the client forward and directly toward your center of gravity into a standing position. So a mechanical lift may be used for clients who can tolerate this procedure. So this provides balance and support. So one, two, uh, ma'am, I would like you to push here, ma'am, ha, in the count of three. So one, two, three, go. Okay. Now, I'm going to assist you. And now, we're going to proceed to procedure number 16. So for procedure number 16, you need to support the client in an upright standing position for a few minutes. This ensures that the patient is in proper standing position. And for procedure number 17, you need to um, together pivot on your foot um, for us from the chair or take a few steps towards the wheelchair, bed chair, and commode or car seat. And now this ensures proper positioning before sitting. And for procedure number 18, to assist the client to sit, move the wheelchair forward or have the client back up to a wheelchair or desired um, seating area and place the legs against the seat. This is to provide strong support for the client. So, um, you need uh, for the procedure number 19, you need to make sure the wheelchair brakes are on. Have the client reach back and um, the feet hold the arms of the wheelchair. This provides strong support for the client. So, now we're going to um, sit, uh, let the patient sit but move the chair forward in three two one okay and that's it now we're going to proceed to procedure number 20 after securing that the brakes are on so now for procedure number 20 stand directly in front of the client and place one foot forward and one back Tighten your grasp on the transfer belt and tighten your gluteal, abdominal leg, and arm muscles. Have the client sit down while you bend your knees, hips, and lower the client onto the wheelchair seat. This provides balance and support for the patient. And now we're going to proceed to procedure number 21 to ensure client safety. Ask the client to push back into the wheelchair seat. 
to ensure that the client see. So I'm going to do it. Forward. And now, ma'am, can you move backward, ma'am, on your seat? In three, two, one, go. Okay, that's it. And now for procedure number 22, to remove the gate transfer belt to prevent discomfort for the patient. So now I'm going to remove this. lower the foot plates and the place um, the client's feet on the on them if applicable so this is to reach easily and the patient can sit properly so you need to um, put down and put it on there so assuming that it is already on the foot plates so that's it and now we're going to proceed to variation transfer it with a belt and two nurses procedure for procedure number one, even if a client is able to partially bear weight and is cooperative, it is still may be safer to transfer a client with the assistance of two nurses. If so, you should position yourselves on both sides of the client and to facing the same direction as the client, flex your hips, knees, and ankles, grasp the client, transfer belt with the hand closest to the client, and with the other hand, um, support the client's elbow. So, team coordination provides patient safety uh, during the transfer. So now, we're going to place here where the client is facing, and we're gonna do this and proceed to procedure number two. So, coordinating your efforts, all three of you stand simultaneously, pivot, and move to the wheelchair. Reverse the process um, to lower the client onto the wheelchair seat. Um, using coordination, nurses saves time and uses energy efficiency. It also promotes comfort for the patient. So, now we're going to move first the wheelchair um, closer to us. So, like this one. And now we're going to stand in three, in the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. And now we're going to move the patient to the new chair together. And let the patient sit. One, two, three. Okay. And that's it for this procedure. And now we're going to proceed to um, the next procedure. Um, this is for variation transferring a client with an injured lower extremity. So when the client has an injured lower extremity, movement should always occur toward the client's unaffected strong side. For example, if the client's right leg is injured and the client is sitting on the edge of the bed, um, preparing to transfer to a wheelchair position to the wheelchair on the client's left side. So make sh um, this makes it easier to move the patient and minimizes the risk for injury for both of the patient and the nurse. So we're going to move the uh, wheelchair here on the patient's um, right side since her injured um, um, is her left side. So now we're going to transfer the patient. I need you to put your hands on my shoulders. We're going to move one, the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. And now we're going to let the patient sit. One, two, three. And that is how you do it. And now we're going to proceed to the next variation, which is using a slide board. Um, this is for the clients who cannot stand but are able to cooperate and possess sufficient upper body strength. Use a um, slide board to help them move without nursing assistance. So you have to um, put it here and um, the wheelchair and slide the patient on this one and put them on the wheelchair so that the client can cooperate with the nurse during the course of the procedure. And after doing this, um, you need to document relevant information while, you're, uh, while you did the procedure. So now I'm going to record the relevant information that I've gathered while performing the procedure. Okay. And that's it. Um, after applying alcohol-based hand job, um, we will now end our um, procedure. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching.